What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are making a beautiful seasonal rhubarb tart. One of my favorite things about this tart is that I can use fresh seasonal produce from my garden. But if you don't have a rhubarb plant at home, run to your local supermarket and pick up a bunch of rhubarb. There is no real guide on how much rhubarb you should put into your tarts. It's personal preference. So I've gone ahead and picked my fresh rhubarb, trimmed and washed them and cut them into cubes. And for our pastry, we will need 325 grams of all purpose plain white flour, 150 grams of a good quality salted butter, 15 grams of corn flour, three to four tablespoons of caster sugar. You can also use table sugar for this and a couple of tablespoons of ice cold water to bring our pastry together. So to make our pastry, we will get a clean mixing bowl and sift in our flour. Just a side note, because we are using salted butter, we don't need to add salt into this pastry mixture. Next, add in your cubed butter all the time, trying to make sure that your butter is as cold as possible. So leave it in the fridge until the very last minute. The key to making great pastry is cold hands, cold ingredients and cold utensils. I'm going to take a sharp knife and start to literally chop the butter into the flour. I want to stay working with these larger cubes until they are much smaller and much more incorporated into the flour. This isn't a quick process, so if you don't have time for this more traditional, slower method of pastry making, go ahead and use your food processor. So once we get it to a point where the butter is no longer in those large cubes, we can start the rubbing in method. Again, because the principles of good pastry are coldness, 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 you can see that I am avoiding touching the butter flour mix with the palms of my hands because these are the warmest parts of my hand. Keep rubbing in the mixture until it starts to resemble almost like a fine wet sand. And that's when you know it's time to start incorporating your ice cold water. A lot of people go wrong at this stage and add in way too much water in one go. I promise it is way easier to add ingredients slowly than it is to try and salvage this pastry if you go in initially with too much water. So start off and add one tablespoon of your ice cold water into the mixture and chop it through the mix. It will look as if nothing is happening, but the more that you work with the mixture, the more it will start to come together. The ratio for this recipe usually takes between four and six tablespoons of water any more than this and you might be leaning on the side of a dough that is too wet and too sticky. You can see there that my bowl is almost cleaned by this dough because it is not overly wet and overly sticky. It is absolutely fine to use your hands to bring this dough into a nice round ball. Place it into the fridge to chill ideally overnight but at least for an hour and a half. When you're ready to prepare your pastry, cut the dough into two equal balls. But because I want my lid to be slightly larger than the base as it has more of an area to cover since you'll have your mounded rhubarb, I'll cut off maybe 30 grams more off one half and add it to the other. I'm going to roll out the base of my tart first. So I have really lightly dusted my work surface with flour and I'm going to take my rolling pin and start rolling out in the same direction and then lifting up the pastry, turning a quarter turn and rolling in one direction again. You'll notice that if your pastry is straight out of the fridge, it will be quite cold and really hard to work with. If you find that this is the case, depending on where in the world you live, don't be afraid to leave it rest on the countertop for 20 to 25 minutes, just to bring it up in temperature slightly so it is a bit easier to work with. The fat content in this pastry dough is quite high, so technically I don't actually have to grease my plate, but I'm a little bit OTT about this and I do it anyway. It's completely optional for you. And once your pastry disc is to size, go ahead and place it gently on your plate. You might find that the pastry is quite thin, so try and work with it carefully so that you don't ruin all your hard work at this point and have tears in your pastry. It is devastating. I'm going to repeat the exact same process with the other disc, and I'm going to place both of them back into the fridge to chill down nicely for again between an hour to an hour and a half, you would be surprised by how important the chilling phase of making really good pastry is. Next up, I'm going to prepare my rhubarb. And that involves adding in my 15 grams of corn flour and three tablespoons of sugar. 
Rhubarb is a really sour, sour fruit. So I would always suggest that you taste a little bit of it before you bake it just to see exactly how sour it is. And that will kind of dictate how much sugar that you need to add. Because rhubarb tends to release an awful lot of water when you bake it, the cornstarch, also called corn flour, acts as almost a gelling agent to prevent the bottom of your pastry from becoming overly soggy. Gently add your lid. So in order to seal up the edges, what we want to do is lightly pat some water onto the very edge of your pastry case. At this point, you can then go around the outside and pinch the top and the bottom layer together. Once you've done that, and just to be extra certain, that the pastry will not split open, you can take your fork and lightly press the impression of your fork downwards onto the layer. So press down and pull backwards towards yourself. This is both functional and pretty. So because my pastry is really nicely chilled down and I'm confident that it is not going to shrink back, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off any excess pastry. To add some color to the top of my tart, I'm going to take an egg, beat it up, and give the top of the tart a lovely egg wash. This gives it a really rich, golden, dark brown color. I absolutely love how it looks, it's so rustic. I'm then going to take my fork and pierce some holes in the top of the pastry to allow steam to escape. We're going to bake this in a preheated oven at 190 degrees Celsius in a fan oven, initially for 10 minutes before turning the heat down to 180 degrees Celsius and baking for a further 20 minutes. When your tart is done, leave it to cool completely on a wire rack before you cut it. I'm not even gonna lie to you, I never wait until this tart is completely cooled because it is way too delicious not to eat when it is a little bit warm. It is so simple and rustic, it's almost deceiving how absolutely amazing it tastes. You can see how short we've gotten that pastry by how much it flakes away. And that brings us to the end of today's video, guys. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you try it for yourself. If you do, please let me know in the comment section down below how you got on with it. And if you liked today's video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Also, don't forget to hit subscribe for more baking videos. And if there's anything you want to see me make, please do leave me a comment. Thank you so much for watching. I'm really looking forward to seeing you back on my channel very soon. Bye.